Yeah, th thanks, Joel, and thanks for your interest in the commercial crew program, and thanks for being here at a relatively late hour. Um, it was a great day today to return Starliner. Uh, it was great to have a successful undock, the orbit and landing of the vehicle. We're really excited to have Calypso back on the ground. You know, Sonny told the ground team, you've got this, bring Calypso back, and that's what they did tonight. Uh, I am thrilled for our Boeing team and all of our colleagues that worked this mission across the country, uh, on the NASA team and the Boeing team. Uh, they've put a lot of heart and soul into this mission over many years, and it's a, te a testament to those people that we got the vehicle back safely today. I, I can tell you that CFT is very personal to, uh, to our team and to a lot of the people that worked on the mission and it represents a tremendous honor to bring the vehicle back, to achieve a lot of test objectives today when we brought the vehicle back, and then really pave the way for future Starliner missions. Uh, I'm happy to report Starliner did really well today in the undock, the orbit, and landing sequence. Uh, you know, we used the NASA docking system to, for the second time on the mission to, to undock from the space station. Uh, that system performed really well. It's a derivative system we'll be used for Orion down the road, so it was good to pave the way for Orion as well. Um, the spacecraft executed a nominal uh, breakout sequence, the first time we've used that to back away from the station. We backed out to about five meters and then did a series of about 12 uh, burns using the service module forward jets. Um, and then we opened, uh, after that sequence of maneuvers, we ended up opening at about 22 kilometers per rev away from the space station. All those thrusters did really well through that SEP sequence, no problems at all, uh, no uh, fail-offs or any problems at all. Um, you know, we had a good chance to look at the helium system today when we, uh, before we undocked, we repressurized that system. We had a criteria of eight PSI per hour in the ullage system for that, uh, the helium, and we were about four, four and a half PSI per hour, so the helium system performed really well. Um, and then, you know, when we backed away from the system or from the state space station, we did hot fire a number of thrusters on the service module. Uh, all eight of those forward thrusters uh, worked just great. We were able to look at the thrust of those thrusters, and it was nominal. Uh, all were performed at 100%, and we also hot fired two aft thrusters, and those uh, worked well. Um, we had great performance from the, the GNC system, uh, the guidance navigation control, the VESTA system. Uh, last flight on OFT2, we had a little bit of trouble with uh, what we call a, a calibration maneuver to, to really make sure that the attitude is good for this uh, space integrated GPS INS system, and that went really well. Uh, we had a deorbit burn that executed on time at 11 uh, 17 p.m. Central. It was about 130 meters per second, 58 second burn. It was a really good burn, um, and the the uh, service module uh, thrusters performed well for that burn. The OMAX performed well. Um, you know, we watched the burn. We saw a couple things uh, in the starboard doghouse. You know, we talked a little bit about the temperatures there being a little higher. One of the thrusters, S2A2, didn't fail off, but it had a little higher temperature than expected, so we'll look at that data a little bit after the flight. And then another thruster in the top doghouse had a little higher temperature. We intentionally had planned to inhibit uh, the software to let thrusters fail off during the deorbit burn, and that worked fine. So we really need to go back and look at all that data. Um, the service module uh, separated away just fine. Uh, that, that sequence went well. Once we separate the service module, we don't have good insight into those uh, thrusters on the service module, but we expected it to be in the Pacific Ocean right where we intended it to be. Uh, during entry, uh, the vehicle performed great. Um, it flew <coughs> just fine. The GNC system performed well. Uh, perfect entry. Um, the one thing that we uh, will have to go look at after the flight is when we hot fired before we uh, had the entry, we hot fired on the crew module, there's 12 thrusters, and one of the up firing thrusters did not perform at all. Uh, we hot fired it twice, and we used two different methods to talk to it, two different uh, parts of the avionics system, and we never saw any chamber pressure, any pulses there. It looked like it's a, this is different than the service module thrusters. It's what we call a monopropellant system. It's very simple. It has a, a valve that opens, and then the propellant flows across the cat bed, and as it flows across that cat bed, there's a reaction and causes thrust, and for some reason, that thruster did not perform, but we used the redundant thruster on the other manifold. There's another upfiring thruster that worked just fine during entry, but something we'll have to go work at. Um, the, uh, 
You know, it was a bullseye landing, a uh, great landing out at White Sands. Um, the one thing we worked a little bit during entry is for some reason, and when we came out of the plasma, uh, the navigation system, we call it the SIGI-3, uh, kind of failed off temporarily, and then that system was brought back on, and it was tracking just fine. Um, SIGI-2 also had a couple little hiccups during entry. We'll have to go look at that. Um, and the, that's really the, the only things that happened during entry. The sublimator that we had a little trouble with, that's a cooling device that is used to cool the vehicle during entry. It performed really well. Um, we had a little trouble forming what we call an ice block on that during ascent, and that performed great tonight. It's really great to get the spacecraft back, and then we'll start the next steps. So we've been talking to the Boeing team already about next steps. We want to get into the spacecraft uh, and start working on the helium system, you know, we talked about, we know we have a seal that we've got to go replace on the flanges, on the RCS thrusters. We need to upgrade that material to make it hypergol compatible and then maybe a little bigger size, we'll do that. Uh, Boeing's already formed teams to look at the, the changes that need to be made for Starliner 1 uh, in terms of the thermal environment and the doghouses. Can we do something different to make the doghouses a little less thermally severe for the OMAC burns and the thrusters? Um, a second team is looking at uh, the hot fire of the thrusters that's needed on the service module to complete the qualification and make sure we understand which pulses cause the Teflon seat on the oxide to swell. And then thirdly, there's a GNC team already formed to look and figure out how we go fly the vehicle differently. Can we change the dead bands? Can we change the way it flies to not stress the thrusters? And so that work has already started. And that's really the path to Starliner 1. So I'm, I'm super proud of the team. It was a great day for the commercial crew program and also for Boeing. Congratulations to that team who worked so hard. It's great to have the spacecraft back. And we're now focused on Starliner 1.